so my name is Heather. So good morning, everyone. My name is Heather. I uh, come from the Global Engagement Office at City University of Hong Kong. And today we have a lot of uh, panelists here. So maybe I can introduce one, uh, one by one. So first of all, of course, we have the representative from Columbia University, Ms. Jessica Saus-Dinsik. She's the Associate Dean for International Programs and Special Projects from the School of General Studies. And uh, from the CDU side, uh, we also have a number of panelists. So we have Dr. Raymond Wong, from the College of Business, Ms. Catherine Shank, also from the College of Business, and then we have Dr. Howard Learn from the College of Engineering, and Ms. Eamon Chan from the College of Engineering. Uh, we also have Ms. Grace Ho from the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, and also Ms. Carmen Wong from also the, the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, and finally we have Ms. Janice Lam, College of Business Lab, uh, uh, College of Science. So um, today, uh, we will, first of all, um, start with um, uh, opening remarks from Ms. Jessica uh, as and then she will also deliver a presentation uh, so in, in order to talk about the admissions arrangements and also uh, the background of Columbia University so you can get to know about uh, what the uh, joint program means to you if you are uh, going to enroll in this program and how you can benefit from this program. And finally, we will also have some uh, short presentations by our CTU College co coordinators. They might be able to share with you some uh, tips or, you know, some, uh, some things very specific to your college if you're interested in applying. And finally, we will also leave some time for the Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, uh, use the um, Q&A function in this chat room. Okay, so I'll pass the time to Ms. Jessica saus -Dinsik. Thank you. Heather, and thank you so much, CityU colleagues and, and everyone who's joining us uh, this morning to learn more about the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program. Um, as Heather mentioned, my name is Jessica Sarles Dinsick. I'm the Associate Dean for International Programs uh, here in the School of General Studies at Columbia. And my role within the School of General Studies and at Columbia University is really to act as the main partnership liaison with all of my fabulous colleagues that you see here with me on the screen today um, to make sure that the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program runs smoothly, that it's a good experience for students. Um, really, the, my, my entire job every, every day is to make sure that students are having a good experience in the program. And I work very closely with everyone here to, to make sure that that's the case. And I, I'm very lucky to have such excellent colleagues um, at CityU that make the uh, running of this program and, and make the, the possibility of this program so enjoyable and so easy to accomplish. Um, I've been working on the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program from the very beginning for about 10 years now. Uh, the program is, is almost 10 years old, which is wonderful, and so it's a pleasure to, to be presenting as part of this year's Open Day, or Information Day rather. Um, I'll get started on a presentation and take you through, just as Heather mentioned, um, the, the kind of specifics of the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, a brief history of Columbia and of the School of General Studies, how the School of General Studies fits into the larger Columbia University um, landscape overall, um, and then go into some of the specifics of what the next couple of months look like if you're already in your second year at CityU and what that application process looks like. And for those of you who are not yet in your second year at CityU, that information will, of course, be a little bit further down the road, but it's always good to kind of know what's coming um, once you get into your second year as well. So I'll go ahead and share my screen, um, and we will get started with the presentation. Um, okay, I think you should be able to see my screen now. Um, is, that, is everyone seeing the, the first slide of the PowerPoint? Yes. Excellent. Thanks, Heather. Um, wonderful. So uh, I kind of stepped all over and talked a little bit over this, this original slide for the PowerPoint presentation, but what we're going to talk about today as part of Info Day is the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program in which you attend two colleges um, over the course of four years and earn two bachelor's degrees. The Joint Bachelor's Degree Program um, between CityU and Columbia University actually has its history that goes back um, to 1954. Uh, within the School of General Studies, we actually have five different dual degree programs that are both international and domestic uh, at the undergraduate level. And that first joint bachelor's degree program, or the first dual degree program, I should say, was launched in 1954 with the Jewish Theological Seminary 
which is located in New York City. Um, that program is a little bit of a different format than what we have for the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program. I'll get a little bit into the format in just a moment, but uh, really that, that program, that historic program, is the one that forms the basis on which we have built the rest of our international dual degree programs within Columbia University and within the School of General Studies at Columbia. We then launched our first international dual degree program with Sciences Po in France in 2010, and then launched the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program with CU in 2012. Um, and really, the, the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program with CU is a, a stunning program and a really special one. Our um, salutatorian of the class of 2021 is from the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program. Um, we've had so many exceptional students come through the program, and we're really excited to, to share with you some information about the program today. So just as the first slide said, Students spend their first two years at City U. So if you're already enrolled at City U, you've taken the, the right first step. Um, you spend your first two years at City U. And if you're offered admission to the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, you would spend your third and fourth year at the School of General Studies at Columbia. Um, and you would graduate at the end of that experience with two bachelor's degrees, one from City U and one from Columbia University. The way that the degree structure works at Columbia, and one of the reasons that the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program can work as well as it does, is that the degree structures are very similar to one another and very complementary to one another. Um, at Columbia, students have to earn a minimum of 124 credits. Um, those are the same kind of credits in terms of the, their weight uh, as uh, you would earn at City U. Um, and so 124 credits are needed to receive a bachelor's degree, to earn your bachelor's degree. And there are 60 credits for what we call the core curriculum. And the core curriculum at Columbia, I'll go into more detail in just a moment, but it's very similar to the, to the gateway education requirements at City U. And that's one of the reasons that the program can function so well, because the two curricula between City University of Hong Kong and Columbia are so complementary to one another. Um, at Columbia, each of the different majors um, vary in size, but usually it's around 30 credits for your major. And then that leaves you about 25 credits of uh, electives, of free electives, where you can take classes that you may be just generally interested in that are neither part of the core curriculum nor your major. Within the context of the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, a lot of times there may be a couple of classes that you would need to fulfill for your city U major. Um, and so sometimes those electives help to make up your, your City U major to bring those credits back to City U in fulfillment of your major requirements. Um, and a lot of times those are just classes that you can take for your own general interest uh, and your own intellectual fulfillment. Um, and so one of the questions, one of the biggest questions that we receive in our inbox um, that, that Heather and I share with a couple of our colleagues is what are the majors that are part of the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program? And here you see, these are half of the majors. I'll switch to the next screen in just a moment. Um, but there really are uh, a number of majors. There are about 12, 11 majors across the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, the College of Business, the College of Science, the College of Engineering, in a number of different uh, academic areas. And you can see on the left which major in screen that, uh, that's part of the eligible um, academic tracks at CDU and how those map to Columbia. What that means is if you are, for example, a global business major at City U and you are offered admission to the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, you would be an economics major at Columbia. Similarly, if you are um, a com computer science major at City U, you could choose from either computer science or computer science and mathematics. You can see a whole list of the, of the majors here. And again, Computing Mathematics, Criminology and Sociology in the Applied Sociology stream, Linguistics and Language Applications, Physics, Psychology, and Public Policy and Politics. And those all map to specific majors that have been pre-approved on the Columbia side. And a lot of the work that, that I do with my colleagues here on the screen is, in fact, making sure that those majors um, and those major approvals really work well together and are really in resonance with one another. Um, and one of the reasons that the program does work so well is um, really the complementary nature of the City U curriculum, of the majors that you take that you follow in years one and two, and the way that those are applied toward your Columbia University major in years three and four, and the creativity that we're able to see 
um, that students bring to the interpretation of bringing those two majors together and, and their own aspirations and their own professional and academic um, goals that are achieved through the combination of these two different academic experiences coming in line with one another. So one of the things that's really interesting and, and that constitutes a lot of the work that we do um, with, uh, with our students in one-on-one -on -one advising sessions and as colleagues on the joint bachelor's degree program is the management of transfer credits. So when a student is offered admission to the joint bachelor's degree program, um, as you prepare to arrive to Columbia in year three as a third year student, we automatically take the city coursework that you've done in years one and two, and we apply 60 credits of transfer credit, just a block of 60 credits toward, your, toward those 124 uh, credit degree requirements at Columbia. And then of those 60 credits, you work with your academic advisor and you are assigned an academic advisor from the moment that you start your time in the joint bachelor's degree program. You work with your academic advisor and with the department that your major is in to determine, okay, from those 60 credits, from the classes that I've taken at CityU in years one and two, what will apply toward my core curriculum requirements? What will be applied toward my major? Um, again, a lot of the work that we do together is really doing pre-approvals and making sure that your city U major maps well to your Columbia major. And so there are a lot of pre-approvals that, uh, that exist um, within the context of the joint bachelor degree program. But then students themselves have to interact, and, and it's a very good thing to interact with your major department at Columbia to make sure that the classes you've taken at city U will then apply toward your major requirements at Columbia. And so you can see here, in order to, apply, to have your classes from city you applied toward your Columbia core curriculum requirements, you have to have a grade of D or better. In order to have your city you classes applied toward Columbia major requirements, in most cases, you have to have a C or better. There are some departments who have specific grade requirements for specific classes. Um, but of course, that's something that you would uh, talk about with your academic advisor and with your major department once you're part of the program. One thing that we feel very strongly about in the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program is that students feel very prepared for their time at Columbia and for their time in the program. Um, we never want you to feel like you've been offered admission to the program and then it's just a very static, you've done two years at City U and now you will do two years at Columbia. Um, really what we want you to feel and, and what we want to try to support is a feeling of integration across all four years of this experience. And so once you're offered admission to the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, you will have a Columbia Academic Advisor assigned to you from the moment you enter the program. And that Academic Advisor will hold um, on-campus advising sessions when you're at Columbia. They actually do a pre-arrival or a pre-departure from Hong Kong to New York academic advising session, group advising session for all of the students who are going to arrive in the fall. Um, you will have support both from the team at City U and your major department, your major leaders, your, your college coordinators, the global engagement office at City U, as well as the GS offices. Um, and we start you, we start that preparation process really from the moment that you're offered admission. We uh, will send you a transition packet that tells you everything you need to know about arriving on campus, how to apply for housing, how to apply for a visa for the U.S. Um, you get priority class registration because you're coming in as uh, a third year student. Um, and those are all things that we share with you and that we make sure that you feel prepared for as you're offered admission to the program and as you say, yes, I want, I want to be part of this experience. Um, if you need additional academic support, uh, we have an academic resource center within the School of General Studies uh, that offers tutoring, that offers um, additional academic supports in a number of areas. Um, typically, we find that students in the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program do not need academic support, and we often find more that they are applying to be tutors um, within the Academic Resource Center as opposed to taking advantage of tutoring uh, options for themselves. So that's a lot of information. Um, and what I'd like to do now is maybe take a step back and talk about the structure of Columbia University and who we are within the School of General Studies and, and really how we fit into, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, that, that landscape. Um, Columbia University was founded in 1754. Um, we are the second oldest uh, college in New York State, second oldest university in the state of New York, the fifth oldest university in the US. Um, and we have a little bit of a unique structure. 
Um, we don't have just one undergraduate college for liberal arts majors. We actually have two. Our sister college is Columbia College. Um, and that's typically the college that students think of when they think about applying to Columbia University when they're coming directly out of secondary school or high school. Columbia College offers a liberal arts program for students who are following a very traditional four-year path where they enter the university from high school, they spend all four years at Columbia, maybe they do a study abroad, but they're really, they're following a single degree path, um, a very traditional path. We also have the School of Engineering and Applied Science, which has their own separate faculty and their own separate set of majors. We have Barnard College, which is our liberal arts college for women, um, and that is an affiliate college. And there's a lot of overlap. Students from Columbia can cross-register for Barnard classes. Students from Barnard can register for Columbia classes. Barnard College has, technically has their own separate campus, which is right across Broadway from the Columbia University campus. But it's a very integrated and very kind of, um, there's a lot of flow back and forth between the Columbia and Barnard campuses. Pardon me. <clears throat> and finally, we have the School of General Studies. And of course, I, I am biased. Um, I work for the School of General Studies. I've, I've been at GS for, for many years now. Um, but I personally think that GS is the best school uh, at the, of all the undergraduate colleges at Columbia. And we are the liberal arts college for students who are following some kind of non-traditional path to their undergraduate education. And so what that means is that if a student has taken a break in their education for any reason after graduating from secondary school, if they have um, served in, uh, in the military, if they have gone directly into the workforce, if they have taken time away for really literally any reason you can think of, we have artists and musicians and dancers um, and entrepreneurs who for one reason or another, have, did not do an undergraduate degree immediately after finishing secondary school, who have come to GS to, to do their bachelor's degree at some point after that, that period of time. But we also have, as part of our mission, um, the, uh, the space to offer non-traditional programs in addition to students, in, in addition to non-traditional student programming, we have non-traditional programming for students. And the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program is considered a non-traditional program because it isn't a, a common choice, it isn't a, a traditional choice to take your, your university experience, your undergraduate experience, and split it between two different universities in two different cities on two different continents over the course of four years. And so as we were developing these programs, our provost's office decided, you know what, that, that's a pretty non-traditional choice, and so it makes sense to live with the School of General Studies um, because we did already have this joint degree program with the Jewish Theological Seminary um, as, as part of our history and as part of our, 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 our mission. Um, and so we had the very happy opportunity and the very happy um, kind of task of creating the joint bachelor's degree program with our colleagues at City U uh, when, when the program was in the, in the development phase. And so that's why the joint bachelor's degree program lives within the School of General Studies. Um, and it's something that we feel very strongly about. Um, based on the success of the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program and the structure that we have, we have continued to build joint degree programs and dual degree programs. Um, and after this program launched in 2012, we built two more, one that launched in 2017 with Trinity College Dublin and one that launched in 2019 with uh, Tel Aviv University. So we have a total of four different international dual degree programs and one domestic dual degree program at GS. And so the thing that's very important to know about the School of General Studies is that although it is a separate school, we have a separate administration, we have a separate admissions process, a separate faculty, not a separate faculty, I apologize, not a separate faculty, a separate staff rather. Um, the thing that is the most important thing to know is that students are fully academically integrated into the Columbia classroom. And that means that you would be taking classes with students from Columbia College, in some cases, students from the School of Engineering and, and, uh, and Applied Sciences, sometimes with students from Barnard College. And really, it doesn't matter which school you enter the university through. Once you get into the classroom, you are fully in the classroom. There's no kind of delineation between GS students or Columbia College students, Barnard, um, the School of Engineering. Really, once you're in that classroom, everyone is in there together being graded on the same criteria stressing over the same exams, learning from the same professors. Um, 
As I mentioned a few moments ago, the Columbia Core Curriculum really is the cornerstone of the Columbia education, and it is just as important from our perspective as the major that you follow. And the core is designed to make sure that regardless of what major you follow at Columbia, you, upon graduation, you are able to go out into the world and be a public intellectual, an analyst of the world around you, and to be able to think about different problems that may be facing you, may be facing the world at large, from a number of different perspectives and a number of different very well-informed perspectives. And so to that end, we have the core curriculum um, that covers a broad swath of different liberal arts and social sciences uh, disciplines. Um, all students take university writing classes in their first semester at Columbia. Um, we, all, we require students to take classes in literature, in music, in art, in natural sciences, in something called the Global Core, which looks outside of kind of a Western Eurocentric lens and requires students to look at other areas of the world that sometimes more traditional liberal arts programs in the U.S. don't require. So we look at um, the Middle East, we look at Asia, we look at South America, we look at um, Africa, we look at Sub-Saharan Africa in particular. Um, and then quantitative reasoning, social sciences, foreign languages. And as I mentioned before, the uh, gateway education requirements at CityU are such a beautiful complement and such a natural complement to the core at Columbia. And so a lot of the classes that you take as part of your gateway education requirements in years one and two align with the core curriculum and can be served to fulfill core curriculum requirements even before you arrive to Columbia if you're offered admission to the joint bachelor's degree program. Um, at Columbia, we have uh, 31,000 students total, about 10,000 undergraduates. Um, among, from those 10,000 undergraduates, about 3,000 students are in the School of General Studies. And so the way that I like to talk about the, the community within joint, the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program uh, is concentric circles. Um, when you're at Columbia, you are part of a number of different communities, and you are able to kind of swim between those different communities as your own preferences may, may change and, and ebb and flow, but you're part of the Joint Bachelor Degree Program, and that's a very tight-knit community. We have about 50 students in the program. Um, you're also part of that larger international programs community of all of our different dual degree programs. Uh, and then you're part of, and we have about 200 students uh, on campus at Columbia that are in all of our different international dual degree programs, so you're part of that community. And then we have the School of General Studies, which has just under 3,000 students. And then you've got the larger community of undergraduates. And really, depending on, on how you want to organize your free time, your social life, your extracurriculars, um, your out-of-class time, you can stay in that very kind of tight-knit community for, of, of the, the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program students, or you can branch out into however many versions of that wider community and you have access to all of them. You have access to all of the different clubs and organizations at Columbia. Um, you can see we have 500 clubs and organizations um, on campus, which means that if you're involved in extracurriculars at CityU, chances are we have something that's analogous um, and similar at Columbia. And if we don't have something that's similar, it's very easy to start a club or organization and we definitely encourage students to do that and to get involved. Um, and then of course, not only are you on the Columbia campus, which is a vibrant community and a, a really active community, but you're, you're in New York City as well. Um, and we have amazing arts and um, museums and nightlife and all of the different things that, that make up part of the city. And one thing that's, that's really important to know is that the name Columbia University is not actually the full name of, of the university. The full name of Columbia is Columbia University in the city of New York. And we take that in the city of New York part very, very seriously. And so if you're in an art humanities class, for example, you'll go to the Metropolitan Museum to see some of the great works in person to really be able to do that analysis and to, to experience firsthand with your own eyes um, what those great works are and what they meant, what they mean and what they've meant in historical context. Um, if you are in uh, music humanities, uh, which is another uh, another great class that's required of students. Um, you'll go to the Metropolitan Opera to hear 17th century lyric Italian at full volume. Um, and so it's something that we really make sure we want students to be part of the city. The city is part of Columbia and Columbia is very much part of New York City as well. 
Um, it's very important to know that housing access to housing is guaranteed for all students in the program. Um, and so that's one of the, the pieces of information that we send to you if you're offered admission. Uh, we do not expect you to find your own housing in New York City. That would be um, would be a little bit a little bit. Um, I don't know what the word is, but we don't expect you to do that. So we, uh, we will send you information on that as well if you're offered uh, a place in the program. And then after the point of graduation, um, and really actually once you're, once you're in the program, you have access to incredible career services. Our Center for Career Education loves the dual degree programs, loves the joint bachelor's degree program. They are very much in favor and, and very supportive of students in the program. And so if you're interested in looking for internships, looking for job opportunities um, in New York or anywhere around the world, you have access to a global network. Um, there is a really, uh, a pretty strong Columbia um, Alumni Association actually in Hong Kong and all around the world. And so if you are, if you find yourself in far flung areas of the world after graduation and you're looking to make connections, the Columbia Alumni Associations and the alumni clubs are great places to start. Um, the Center for Career Education, as I mentioned, they offer um, job fairs and internship fairs all throughout the year. They offer specific programming for if you're looking to go into finance, if you're looking to go into um, consulting, if you're looking to go into law, if you want to go to law school, for example. Um, it, we offer fellowships in graduate school advising. Our graduate school advising program within the School of General Studies is one of the only only programs of its kind in the United States. It's very, very robust and very helpful, especially for students in our dual and joint programs because the graduate school coaches that we have actually help students to um, really talk about their experience in these programs and talk about how the joint bachelor's degree program is not just two years and then two years, but is intended to be this fully integrated experience. And so that's something that you have access to Again, from the moment you're offered admission, past the point of graduation and into your, your experience as a graduate of the program. And then, as I mentioned, uh, when you graduate, you're part of two global alumni networks. The, the CityU alumni uh, network is uh, all around the world. You find CityU alumni literally um, all, over, all over the world in every, every country, every city you can imagine. And that's the same for Columbia. And so as you go out into the world, as you are creating the life that you that you want to live after the point of graduation, you have access to these two networks um, that are so robust and so supportive and so enthusiastic to welcome uh, graduates and to welcome new members of these alumni communities. Okay. We talked a lot about the big picture things. I think it's time to talk about really the, the very specific parts of the admission process. Um, and so for students who are not yet in their second year at some as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, this may not be as applicable and, and as relevant to your current experience, but it's good to know what's, what's coming down the road if you decide to apply to the program. And for students who are in your second year, this is, this is the information that, that you need for sure. Um, so, in order to be eligible to apply to the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, you have to be enrolled in a four-year degree program of one of those eligible majors that we talked about uh, a few minutes ago, one of those 11 different majors at CityU. In years one and two, um, you have to complete at least 60 credits so that we can transfer those 60 credits to Columbia as you uh, come to, to year three and four. And you have to have a minimum 3.3 GPA. For some majors, that minimum GPA may be higher, but for the program overall, it's a minimum 3.3 GPA. Um, so, what I recommend you do if you are interested in applying, in applying for the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, definitely check with your college, definitely check with your major leader on what the minimum GPA requirement is specifically for your major, because it may be slightly higher for your major depending on what your major is. Um, we also require students to um, submit an IELTS or TOEFL uh, as part of their, their application. Um, and that's something that if you've taken the IELTS or TOEFL as part of your CityU application, you can submit that. We do require students to sit for um, a, a Columbia administered exam called the American Language Program Essay Exam, the ALP Essay Exam, and that's part of the application process. And what you'll do in the coming weeks is you will actually pre-apply through CityU. You'll go through a pre-approval process. And um, I have a feeling my colleagues on screen will talk about what that pre-approval process looks like in just a few minutes. So I will leave that to them. We'll put a, a pin in that and come back to it. 
And then once you are approved on the city, you decide to apply to the Joint Venture 3 program, you will start the application process through a Columbia portal that we have. Um, you'll go through interviews both on the city and Columbia side. And then as you go into the application process, we'll ask you to send in your high school and secondary or secondary school records. If you've attended any other colleges or universities in addition to City U, we do see that from time to time. Um, and we do ask that any documents that are not in English uh, come along with an English translation. Um, and so once you are pre-approved on the City U side, once you, once you have that first round of approval and, and uh, are, have been approved to apply to the Joy Bachelor's degree program, you will then be able to, uh, we'll, we'll send you a link to apply to the Columbia, through the Columbia portal, rather. Um, we also ask for, in addition to what we consider kind of the more quantitative things, the more quantitative elements of your application, quantitative elements being your transcripts, your test scores, we also ask for qualitative elements. Uh, we ask for one letter of uh, academic letter of recommendation. Actually, that's two. I, I need to update my PowerPoint. Oh my gosh, I thought I had updated that. We ask for two letters of recommendation um, for in support of your application. One of them should come from a City U professor. The other one can come from a second City U professor or someone else who knows you well and can speak to why you are a good fit for the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program. And then, really, to my mind, the most important part of your application is your own essay. And we ask you to tell us, really, two things. There are, there are two basic questions that are part of your, your personal essay, your personal statement. Why are you right for the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program? And why is the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program right for you? And we ask you to spend about 1,000 to 1,500 words telling us about why the program is the right choice for you, how it complements what you've done in CDU in years one and two, how it will help you achieve your future goals, your academic goals, your professional goals, your personal goals, um, and really why you're interested not just in an international experience, not just interested in being in New York City, but why you're, you're interested in Columbia University in specific. Why is this the right international experience for you? Um, and so we ask you to tell us all of that. We go through a very robust review process, um, and then that's when we reach out and start scheduling interviews for students who are going through the application process. The application timeline, uh, we, are, we are starting. The application timeline is starting. Um, we're in mid-October, um, and the internal application invitations, uh, if they haven't been sent out already, and again, I'll defer to my, to my CityU colleagues, um, those will be coming out soon. In early November, your internal application will be due to your individual departments. Um, in mid-November, that's when the, the screening process starts. And then in late November, you will get, uh, you'll get information from your individual departments at CityU um, as to whether you've been approved to move into the next phase of the application process. Um, our application for the Columbia side is due on January 15th. That's the same deadline every year. Um, and then after January 15th, we will reach out to you to schedule interviews with members of the Columbia, um, the Columbia team. And in mid-March, we send out admissions decisions to all the students who are offered admission, pardon me, to the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program. Um, so, now it's time to talk about the financial aid side. Uh, students who are offered admission to the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program are very much eligible to apply for financing, for, for scholarships, for grants, um, from both Columbia and CityU. Um, you can see here kind of what, uh, what the tuition is per credit for students uh, at Columbia and within the School of General Studies. Um, students do take approximately 32 credits per year. You have to take a total of 64 credits in order to, at, at Columbia in years three and four in order to be eligible for your bachelor's degree. And so you take about 32 credits per year, about 16 credits per semester. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less. And so if you're interested in applying for financial aid, you would complete something called the CSS profile. And that's um, a financial aid document that asks you a lot of information, biographical information, family finance information, um, because all of the scholarships that we offer on the Columbia side are need-based. They're, they're means-tested, meaning we look at your family financial situation and we try to uh, award scholarships based on the amount of financial need that, that you have, that your family has. Um, and so that can vary widely from student to student. One thing that I should stress is these, um, every student 
is extremely deserving of a scholarship. Um, and so we don't have any merit-based scholarships for the joint bachelor's degree program. They are all need-based based on individual financial circumstances. Um, so you can see here some information on the CSS profile. And the other thing that I want to stress is that when we are reading your application for admission, we are not looking at the financial side of things at all. We offer admission to students who are a strong fit. We offer admission to students who we think are going to be good members of the community, who are going to be really interesting, who have interesting ideas and interesting goals. Um, and then, once we've made that decision internally and before we send the decision to you, that's when we take a look at the finances to see how can we support you, how can we make this uh, financially possible experience for you as part of the program. But we look at the, the all of the application information first before we look at any of the finances. Um, on the City U side, there's also funding available. Um, City U scholarships available in a, for a, a wide range of, um, of awards. Um, and after you receive your offer of admission from the Joint Bachelor's Degree, Pro degree Program, you would then apply for City U scholarships in addition to any uh, Columbia scholarships. And so we have here contact information for the, for the various colleges um, that are part of the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program. The college coordinators are, are excellent colleague who, colleagues who make everything possible um, on the coordination side. And so if you have questions, if you, um, as, you as you start to think about applying um, and submitting your application, if you need information on your major requirements, if you need to, for example, check in on what the ma uh, minimum GPA is for your individual major, these are your best points of contact. Um, and I believe that this is the end of my part of the presentation. I'll leave our, uh, our email and our website here. And of course, I will um, bring that into the chat as well. And thank you all so much for all of your, uh, for your attention and, and for being part of this today. And I think that some of our colleagues on the CDU side will have uh, some presentations as well. So I'll go ahead and stop my screen share for you. Thank you so much, Jessica, for your presentation. Um, I believe that it was uh, very, very informative and students would be able to get a lot of information about the background of uh, Columbia University, the School of General Studies, and how to apply, and if they have any questions, who to reach out to. So for now, um, maybe I will pass the time to the uh, respective colleges here so that they can talk about something more specific to their programs. Um, or, you know, if you don't have anything uh, PPT to share, you can also uh, greet your students so that they will know who to contact if they have any questions in the future. So uh, maybe we, we can start with College of Business. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, Jessica, I think that, you know, uh, yeah, thank you so much for all those uh, support and those care that you have given to uh, our city students, especially I think that, you know, uh, we're indebted to your support and also uh, Dean Lisa and also Vice Dean Curtis. I think that, uh, you know, I just miss all of you. Just uh, I think that, you know, we got this kind of the uh, travel restrictions with it is uh, probably I think that we can throw more kind of the exchange from time to time and to get to uh, let uh, each other to uh, participate in the activities that we are offering. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, that what I want to share with the students is that, you know, uh, I think uh, you, you can see that uh, this is uh, the one of the best uh, collaborations that we set up at CTU and also I think that you know with Columbia University and you know today uh, for Jessica information we also get the information day uh, at CTU so in one of my slides that I'm going to uh, go for this first section at 10 o'clock it's about these collaborations so uh, I think that you know this is the uh, best set that we have in here that I want to definitely uh, promote to our students and uh, you know what I'm saying here is that you know to supplement a little bit of uh, what Jessica mentions to uh, all of you, and uh, it, it's not just about the uh, two degree in two places. I guarantee you that you know you get the support from both sides, and uh, you know Jessica knows very well that you know uh, she uh, explained to you that they got the uh, advisors to support the students at the time when they are in Columbia University. But at the same time, I think the CTU also jointly work with them to see that what can we help out our students in the past. So you know that uh, we're not just sending you to the Columbia, but at the same time, we also give you the support uh, as best as we can. So I think that, you know, that uh, basically uh, uh, can't join the uh, uh, 
uh, uh, strong collaborations between both sides in here. So for the students, I think that you know you're so lucky if you're being admitted into this program uh, to get the uh, uh, not just only about exposure or some curriculum enhancement, but also you get the support from both sides as well. And uh, you know when you look into the uh, uh, GS uh, curriculum, I think Jessica explained very well to you already. Uh, but I'm tell you that you know even I think they they sort of having the name called GS. I guarantee you that the curriculum is very rigorous. So I think that it is not an easy one, and therefore I think that they got a very high threshold of meeting the student. Uh, you know, uh, it's not just about the uh, uh, kind of the different way of the thinking in different place, but also the diversity of the student profile in the GS and also the cultural diversity, uh, gender diversity, or even their experience, their age, I think that they're totally impressed. And that is not what I'm saying. It's basically uh, based on experience from our student in the past. And uh, out of those, I think that you know you need to a little bit uh, prepare to uh, 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 to be settled down well, to get used to the culture. So that thing, uh, for those part, I think that both of us would be happy to have you out on that. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, just that what uh, Jessica also mentioned to you as well for the career development is also part of their concern as well, and also this is also our concern as well. So we are very happy that in the course of business we got uh, uh, some good story uh, uh, to to tell as well. I think that probably Jessica also remember we got uh, Lee Wen Da, Frank, uh, Frank Lee, Leonard McKinsey. Uh, I think that you know he he also show us in the WeChat about uh, the first day he started employment. We got a corporate card from. Can see already, so I think that oh, this is amazing, and also we got some other students who also land on further study in the U.S. as well. So I think that you know, uh, for that part, this is kind of a guarantee for all of you. So I think that this is the feature uh, that this program can offer to you. Now coming back, I think for the student, I do believe that you know, uh, just like what Jessica mentioned to you already, uh, even though the minimum of the CGPA is about three point three, but I think the average in the past, I think, is very high. So I think you have to get a better prepare to demonstrate that uh, you're good enough. As I said, that because of the uh, training there is very rigorous, so you have to make sure that you are good enough uh, to complete your study in the Columbia as well. At the same time, I think that you know uh, it's not just about the academically uh, strength that you have, but also I think you have to demonstrate your passion, your initiative, and also just like what Jessica mentioned in your personal statement, you tell uh, Columbia why you want to go for that. It's not just about uh, you just want to get some internet exposure. You also need to tell exactly that uh, why, why this is so important to you. And you have to realize that how good you are. At the same time, I think it is also the common questions that people will ask you. Uh, why you believe that you can get something from there. At the same time, you can contribute back to the uh, university and also the student community as well. So I believe that those are the things that you have to uh, pay attention to on that. And uh, I, I believe that you know uh, if you can really demonstrate in that way, uh, that would be good enough for you. But last but not least, I think that you know this is very important because you know that they need to have the good recommendation letter from the professor. Uh, I know that in the past we all on the Zoom class you don't know your professor as well. But starting right now, I think that probably you have a year one, you still got time to prepare for that. To make sure that you'll be known to your professor, you'll be observed, you'll be spotted by a professor such that they can help you out to certain aspect. So I guess that you know this is also the way to demonstrate your passion and initiative as well. Okay. So I guess that you know this is all my sharing from my side. All right. So I guess come back to you, uh, Heather. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong. So um, Catherine, may I know if you have something additional to add? Yes. Hello everyone, good morning. I'm Catherine, the coordinator from the College of Business. And for the uh, students from College of Business, I believe all the eligible year two students have already received the email uh, about the application details from the departments in the last couple of weeks. So if you have any inquiries or questions regarding this John Bachelor deg degree program, you're welcome to come to me. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Catherine. So uh, now we can pass the time to the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Grace, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, Jessica, and uh, good morning, um, studio colleagues and everyone. Uh, warm greetings from the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences class. Our class has five eligible majors under the joint program with Columbia University. Now, for some of our majors, only specific streams are eligible. 
So please check the details on the joint program website or the college website. Uh, for year one students, you may like to take this into consideration when you choose your major stream. Now the Columbia Joint Program is absolutely fantastic. An important question to ask is, is it the right fit for you? Um, the admissions process is competitive and the joint program curriculum is highly demanding. Do you have the strong commitment and self-discipline as well as excellent time management to handle all the heavy workload and the abilities to immerse yourself in a new culture? Do you have a clear plan for your future? When deciding whether the joint program is the right fit, students should think about the future goals, their future goals and the career path they want to pursue. Now find time to reflect about yourself and know where your passion or your spike lies. Also talk to your parents and very importantly, seek advice from your major leader. You need to plan your study ahead and carefully. Survey the program you want to study at Columbia and the kind of uh, college life you want to have at Columbia in New York and um, consult your major leader before you submit your application. Now, even year one students, you are also encouraged to meet with your major leader to identify your academic potentials and uh, get to know the requirements of your study plan. One thing you can act fast perhaps is to take the IELTS or the TOEFL test early as you will be required to submit your IELTS or TOEFL result within valid within two years for your application. And uh, class has a regular internal selection process. Uh, there may be interviews at the departmental or and the college levels. We are strict about deadlines and we will give due consideration of students' academic performance throughout their uh, entire year one and year two, both year one and year two. If an applicant falls short of our expectation, the college may reconsider his or her application at any point of time. That said, the college will provide necessary support to students during the application process, including uh, providing connection to some of our uh, uh, class alumni in this joint program. Uh, uh, you will find this very helpful. And to class students, uh, you, your, your home department will send out an email uh, starting next Monday uh, about the joint program admission to all eligible year two students. Okay, all eligible year two students. So please follow the instructions and the um, and the uh, action there to take and uh, pay attention to the deadlines. So um, uh, that's mainly I want to share, and I hope you'll find this helpful. Please feel free to contact the college office if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Grace. And so uh, next we will have the College of Engineering. So, Dr. Howard Lin. Yes. Okay. So thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Uh, uh, good morning, colleagues. So uh, at first, uh, so uh, I would like to point out that under the College of Engineering, only Department of CS, or I'm from Department of CS, students are eligible to join this double degree program. So I would like to know the audience, uh, how many of you are our CS students? Can you click the raise hand button so that I get some idea how many people are there? Okay. So can you click the raise hand button? Oh, quite a number. Okay. So um, that's good to know. And um, well, maybe I share just one slide to tell you. Uh, this is uh, the um, our joint degree program with Columbia U arrangement for our department. So uh, you you heard Jessica saying that normally it's uh, you know two years at CTU, two years at Columbia U. But since our uh, program, okay, so with uh, CS, right? So students need to have a placement year. So in their third year, they work in a local company to get some experience, right, for at least nine months to semester. So, and also uh, we, uh, you know, our students uh, finish their project before they go. So this is kind of like uh, what ha what's happening, okay? So, and then another thing that I want to say is our students are actually uh, have been doing very well um, so you can see that on the left-hand side of the photos, right? So, you know, a few years ago, our, our graduate student, right, Mr. Gopina, received the Jonathan L. Gross Award for Academic Excellence. And then just this year, okay, so during this uh, graduation ceremony, right, I, we are so happy to hear that our, our 
you know, newly graduate student, Mr. Sir Kaiwen, okay, Kevin received the Russell C. Mills Award for the area of excellence in the area of computer science. So our students are doing very well. And this award actually, I, I believe is actually only given to one student across all the batch, not just computer science student, not just CTU joint bachelor degree program, it's like the whole batch. So this is very prestigious and our students are doing well. So, uh, well, having said that, so, um, Please know that uh, because this is so pre prestigious, we only will accept the best students. We only recommend the best student. Best student doesn't mean, well, of course you have to have a, you know, good CGPA, you know, so, but in addition, okay, so we are going to have a screening interview by the department. So you're going to see me, probably my colleague asking you a question to see whether you really are knowledgeable, right? So whether you think about whether this program is for you, Okay, so for example, if you tell me, if I ask you, why do you want to join this bachelor, joint bachelor degree program? And you will say, oh, I want to broaden my horizon. Okay, most likely we will not select you because, well, I mean, this is so broad, so general, right? So please be prepared to think about what are the unique features, right, offered by this program from the CTU side and also from the Columbia U side. Okay, so this is very important. And um, yeah, so, so you have to be well prepared to demonstrate that you are the best and we should actually recommend you. And this process, I think, uh, well, right now we are uh, accepting applications and afterwards I'll have the list of students and then uh, I'll arrange interview probably, uh, you know, in November or December. Okay, so check your emails um, uh, regularly about this. And, uh, and other than me, so uh, you, you see our uh, College of Engineering, uh, we have our colleague, uh, Yiman, right? So who's also helping out, taking care of this program. And then uh, in our department, we have uh, Ms. Zoe Chen. So if you're in our department, you definitely know Zoe, okay? So she also uh, help out a lot in the logistics arrangements, okay? So so these are the key people you need to uh, know, okay? So that's that's all my, uh, what I want to say, okay? So uh, thank you. So Yiman, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I think I uh, just want to say hi. And um, um, students, if you have any, issues that you are, you are most welcome to come to the college office and ask us, yeah. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Dr. Howard Learn and also Eamon. Uh, last but not least, we also have the College of Science, so let's welcome Janice. Hello everyone, hi Jessica. Um, so College of uh, Science students, I'm the, uh, the coordinator for this program. Uh, so on Monday, we will send out the application form to all eligible year two students. So when you receive it, please uh, remember to apply early and follow instructions on the application form. And uh, as other coordinators have suggested, I would also um, highly recommend you to consult with your major leaders on the course plan. Uh, if you don't know who the major leaders are for um, math students, MA students, uh, you can go to uh, Dr. Dai Dan. And then for physics students, you can consult with uh, Dr. Condon Lau. So um, yeah, that's uh, all my suggestions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janet. Uh, so thank you all the, the different college coordinators for your presentations, sharings, and also tips for the students uh, in terms of preparing their applications. So now um, I think we can proceed to the last part of the uh, info, virtual info session today, which is the Q&A session. I can already see uh, some questions in the Q&A uh, chat room. So maybe we can go through uh, go, go through all the questions one by one. And also for any other students, if you have any questions, please feel free to type your questions there so that uh, Jessica and I, and also um, you know, all, uh, the college uh, coordinators can uh, 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 take care of your questions one by one. So that's the first one. Is the 3.3 GPA requirement standard for all major departments? And I believe this for, uh, the second question is pretty much the same. What, what, what was the average GPA in the past year for this competition? Uh, so as Jessica has mentioned, I believe that 3.3 uh, is the minimum requirement, but for your specific majors, uh, you would have to check with your respective college uh, or also department to see whether there's any uh, specific GPA requirement Also, so um, maybe we can, Heather, if it works for you, answer the next question about um, 
whether GPA in year two will be the only GPA that's considered in the application. Um, and actually, because you are applying in year two, you won't have your GPA for year two, so it's actually your year one GPA um, and, and the first semester of year two that is, uh, that is used. So it's your first three semesters at City U um, really that are, that are looked at. But when you are submitting your, your kind of pre-application on the City U side to your department, it's really your year one grades because you will, it'll be this time next year if you're currently a year, a year one student. This time next year as a year two student, you won't have any grades for year two yet. So it's really your year one grades that are, that are the most important um, as you start the application process. And for the next question, it's about um, how to perform better in the interview. Mm -hmm. So maybe I will leave the question, uh, the answer to Jessica. Sure, absolutely. I'm happy to. I'm happy to to speak to that. It's a great question. Um, so, who are, I apologize if you're hearing some noise. My my cats are getting a little excited uh, because it's late late in the evening here on the on the New York side. Um, so, how can I perform better in the interview? Um, from our side, when we on the Columbia side are conducting interviews, there are it's very similar really to the personal statement. What we're looking to to understand is why you're drawn to this program, why this program is interesting for you, why you want to really be very intentional in, but, but also to disrupt your, your college experience, your university experience. Um, you know, what we see over and over again for students who are uh, applying to the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program is that they've done exceptionally well in years one and two. Um, and for a lot of students, the idea of going from somewhere where you're doing extremely well and changing everything and really going into a new academic environment, that can be, that can be a really daunting um, thing. That can be kind of a, a scary thing to, to look at. And yet what we see are students who are really excited to really turn their, their experience almost upside down and um, really change their, their academic experience, even though both City U and Columbia are very rigorous and you're, you're getting an excellent education in both places, they are different from one another. The, the classroom experiences are different. The, the social experiences are different. And so what we're looking to understand in the, in the interview is why is the program interesting to you? Why is this the right choice to change what you're doing in your, in your undergraduate education? Um, what are your future goals? And you don't, they don't have to be, you know, you don't have to have every day of the next 10 years planned out. Um, but we want to know what your aspirations are, what you are hoping to do after graduation, even if it's in very general terms. And if you know kind of what you're thinking about doing after graduation, how does the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program help you get there in a way that maybe continuing in a single degree track at City U wouldn't do as easily or as quickly or as, as kind of um, um, in quite the same way? And so those are the things that we think about when we're going into the, the interview process. But really, we're also just looking to get to know you. We want to know who the students are as people who are applying to this program. You know, we're not looking only for people who are only going to get excellent grades all the time. We're looking for interesting people who have um, interesting ideas and who have um, interesting interpretations on the world. And that's, that's really what we see among the most successful candidates for the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program. So the next question, how to apply to this program? Uh, will our department send us email to inform us to apply to this program? Uh, so as Jessica has mentioned, this is actually a two-step application process, meaning that first of all, you have to go through an internal selection process at CityU. Uh, and then afterwards, you will also have to go through the American language program exam, uh, as well as an interview with Columbia University. So uh, it means that first of all, you will have to actually submit an internal application form to your department uh, by uh, the deadline. Uh, so the deadline this year is actually the 7th of November. So if you have not already received an internal application form, I would advise you to check with your respective department as soon as possible so that you will have in a sufficient time to fill in the form and su submit any required documents. Okay, so um, you, you also need to make sure that you meet the deadlines because uh, I believe that um, uh, some college coordinators have already mentioned that they have really, really strict with their deadlines and um, um, you, you have to make sure that you submit the internal application form before the 7th of, of November.
And uh, the next question, what yeah. would be the GPA requirement for class then? So I will defer mm -hmm. the answer to Grace. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, class uh, uh, pretty much followed the, the framework as shared by uh, Jessica. So yes, our minimum is 3.3. .3, but as I, I can tell you, um, no, no alumni of this program in class admit at that minimum GPA, okay, so far. So uh, I think our average is, uh, is similar around 3.6 and um, and uh, we have uh, quite a number of students who get in uh, about at 3.7 or above. So I think, uh, yeah, GPA uh, is, uh, is is quite a uh, uh, high demand uh, in, in our college. And as I said before, uh, uh, for admission, so um, uh, your home department Monday about a joint program admission uh, with the application form. So please follow the uh, the instructions and, and the deadline there. We have an internal deadline. So uh, and prepare all your documents. So uh, so pay attention to the email uh, you'll receive soon, uh, starting next Monday. Uh, so I think it's a question for the College of Business. Is there any information about the admission quota of the business majors? Um, let me answer these questions. Uh, we don't have any quota restriction for this joint bachelor degree program, but uh, we will look at the student's academic achievement and the performance in the interview. And on the Columbia side, it's exactly the same. Uh, we're not looking at particular quotas for, for any one major or the other. It's really a matter of, of who the strongest students are and who the strongest candidates are for admission to the program. So um, the, the next question is about uh, extracurric extracurricular activities and internship experience. Um, I'm happy to, to, to speak to this absolutely. Um, it's not necessary to, to have internships or extracurricular activity um, experiences in order to be eligible to apply for the program, but we typically see that most students um, who are applying to the program, who are strong candidates for the program, have done something outside the classroom, some kind of uh, additional intellectual or personal enrichment that complements their experiences at CityU. Um, again, if, if really your goal is just academic excellence um, and you're spending your time really in, immersed in academic excellence, that's absolutely fine. Um, like I said, in the interview process, we want to get to know you, um, and that's something that can definitely be, and be explored and be discussed. Um, but we, we typically tend to see that students who are strong applicants to the program um, do, do indeed have at least a few extracurriculars here and there. But again, it really does vary from student to student. Yeah, I, I would also think that it's probably because, you know, your experiences make you, they shape who you are. So very often through a lot of different kinds of exposure and experience, you will have better idea of what you want to do after graduation. And that's why those students are often more motivated. Yeah, so it's uh, maybe there's some correlation, right? Okay, so the next question, uh, should I apply for CityU first? I believe, um, so uh, the, the student who asked this question is a prospective student um, who's probably still studying in high school. So um, as you can see from the PowerPoint presentation, um, very detailed information, right? Uh, so you, you can see that it's a joint bachelor's degree program. Uh, so if you want to participate in this program, first of all, you have to become a CTU student. So in, in short, yeah, in, in a nutshell, the answer is yes. So you should apply to CTU first. And if you would like to know about the admissions requirements for your specific qualifications, uh, your home country's uh, requirements, please let me know because uh, I, I'm also re responsible for the uh, international admissions for non-local students. So we can have a separate conversation for, for that. Uh, for the next question, uh, for the CS department specifically, may I ask Dr. Learn what was the average and minimum GPA requirement of uh, students admitted last year? So I will invite Dr. Learn to answer this question. Minimum GPA requirement. I think the minimum is kind of like the same. Uh, so the minimum only like, uh, you know, if you pass a minimum, then you receive invitation email from us. OK, so uh, inviting you to apply and the average GPA. Uh, OK, so seriously, I don't think this really matter because it changes every year, because for us, we actually look at uh, whether you can do well in the interview before we recommend you. So even if you have 4.0 GPA, but if you are not able to answer my simple question about 
what are the unique features from this program? And you are not able to tell me what you have thought about as a, you know, you know yeah, how this program can help you, right, grow in your career path, this kind of question. So I will not recommend you. So it's not, GPA is just one minimum that, you know, for you so that we will uh, do the uh, selection interview. So I hope that, you know, that should be clear to you. And, and if you're thinking about quota, yeah, so far, I, I don't think we have quota, you know, because we are only sending our best students, okay? So if I would say that if all the applicants are, are the best, you know, so I will be happy to send all of them. On the other hand, if the applicants are not good and I may send no one, okay, it's fine. Okay, I better, you know, control the quality of the student rather than send, send one poor student. And then, you know, that that's bad, right? You know, if we send a poor student who does not do well, and then, uh, so it hurts our reputation. So I hope that answers your questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also uh, the, for the next question, I think it's also uh, directed to the College of Engineering, uh, Computer Science. Uh, so the student would like to know whether uh, the internal application form has already been sent out. If not, uh, then when can the student expect to receive the, the document? Uh, you, you, may, you have some idea whether uh, we have already sent out the invitation uh, email to those students who have a uh, certain GPA value, do you know? I think uh, we have to check. We will um, get this uh, early next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you'll be done. So uh, check your email regularly. And uh, okay, so those of you who are in CS, notice that I have set up a you know a page for this uh, you know well, for for CS student you know exchange student in general. But under that there is a category called JBDP Joint Bachelor Degree Program. So you could also post your question there. And then I check regularly. So you can also ask in case you have any question about this process as well. So the next question, uh, I'm a year one student studying business anal analysis. So uh, this student is a um, business analysis student and he or she would like to know what he or she can do in order to better prepare for this program. Yeah, maybe I can uh, just uh, answer on that. And uh, thank you for the question. I think that, you know, uh, uh, you heard from these uh, presentations that uh, we all understand this program is a very competitive one. So I think that, you know, the direct answer to your question is that you have to make sure that you are competitive enough. So I think that, you know, uh, to summarize, I think they got all different aspects, like, you know, uh, uh, academic performance is definitely one thing. It's not just because about studying this program, it's also because of your responsibility as well. I think that, you know, you have to make sure that you can demonstrate to people so that you can master your study well, uh, to demonstrate academic excellence, to make sure that you can settle down well in the other city to study some other different program as well. And the second is about those uh, training or exposures that you can get uh, before you go to Colombia. And certainly, I think uh, we discussed a little bit, uh, there could be the internship, there could be some other extra curricular activities. But the main point, I think, to me, I think that is that you have to uh, try your try best to explore the world, to uh, try to uh, demonstrate your desire or curiosity to explore this world. It's not just about the uh, work related training. It could be something like even do the voluntary work. You have some kind of exposure in different kind of country to know uh, how people do well or do uh, poorly in different uh, places of the world. And, and uh, I think uh, at the same time, you also need to know the people from different uh, country, culture, as best as you can, because I think that, you know, uh, for a lot of time, I think being grown up or training in Hong Kong, I think that we, we just sort of a bit weak in this area. You, you can't embrace people's culture, people's feeling. I think that that would be a little bit uh, kind of the disadvantage to you. And when you go to the uh, uh, this diversity in New York, I think that, you know, this is one of the big things they have to first settle down. So I think that, you know, uh, uh, get to know people and uh, not just about your peers. And also, as I said before, uh, uh, know your professor and know your major leaders and at least let the uh, spot you and to give you advice to guide you for these uh, preparations in here. So those are things that could help you to uh, well prepare uh, before you apply this program in here. So, so I hope that I could uh, supplement a bit on that and probably Kevin can also help me as well at the end. And, and I just want to also answer the other question here because I'm going to leave for the information uh, sections very soon. So the other one is uh, we talk about that the, the quota issue. I think uh, just like what Jessica uh, mentioned to you, we don't have that. Uh, but then I think we have uh, quite a number of applicants in the previous years but at the end. I think roughly for each uh, 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 paired major, I think we got two to three every year, probably I think Jessica and also Kevin can correct me. So I think that it's not just about 
uh, uh, those kinds of number of applications. It's also about this uh, uh, competitiveness among those uh, applicants and also the selections process that we put in. So therefore, at the end, that's a result. But then uh, if you are interested in uh, a private program, I think that is uh, totally irrelevant for you. Right, the number. I think you know, as long as you are very interested in that, you're passionate in that, you know how well you are, and you know what we want to get. So basically, just apply. All right. So I think that you know, you can demonstrate to us. I think that we will select you at the end. Okay. So yeah. So probably I think uh, I will probably leave for now. So uh, yeah. Thank you again, Jessica. So it's very nice to see you. So hope to see you again. And we can also thank Hela. So I'll probably leave first. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang. Thank you, Dr. Wang. It's very good to see you. Hopefully next time in person. I'm sorry, I would like to supplement a little. Uh, so if you are a student from the business analysis or other eligible majors from the college or business, you are advised to talk to your major leaders on your study plan because you are required to complete a required courses, a number of required courses in your first two years. So if you wish to apply for this joint bachelor degree program, you are advised to talk to your major leader to design your study plan. Thank you. Okay, so we have another question. What is the total number of people admitted to the program last year? I can actually, I have some of those numbers up, Heather, if it's helpful to, to, for me to, to jump in here. Um, so last year, for, for the incoming class of fall 2022, or fall 2022 now, um, we offered, uh, it looks like 17 16, students. 16, 17, yeah. Yep, 17 students admission. Um, and then for the previous year, we offered um, another, let's take a look and see here, another 18 students for admission. So it's it's usually somewhere between 15 and 25 each year. Some years are slightly bigger, some years are slightly smaller, um, just depending on the number of applicants that we see and the, and the, the amount of interest that we have. Um, but usually we've been around 20 students year over year. Sometimes it varies a little bit. And uh, as uh, Jessica and also all the different college coordinators have mentioned, there is no quota on both sides. Uh, it sometimes, you know, the number of enrolled students will also depend on the whether students would like to apply to this program, because I, I believe that for the last two, three years, it, it was also slightly affected by the pandemic. Right. But with borders re being reopened again, we foresee that maybe uh, we'll, there will be more interested students this year. Absolutely. We definitely saw that, um, I think, in the last couple of years, but everyone is, um, you know, back on campus fully in person on the Columbia side, which is really the goal of international education, right? The, the idea of doing international exchange is, um, it's very necessary to do that in person. So, so yeah, um, I'm happy to answer this, this question that's just come in. Um, what will the ALP essay exam be like? Um, the ALPSA exam, first, I want to mention to anyone who is applying this year um, to the Joint Bachelor's Degree Program, don't stress about the ALPSA exam. It is, um, it's a written exam um, that takes a prompt, usually from kind of current events, and you have uh, just, I think it's 105 minutes, it's, it's a very specific number, 105 minutes, you get a prompt to um, that comes from current events and, and news, uh, and you are asked to write a short essay on the prompt that you receive. And that's, it's different every year, so I can't even tell you what some of the prompts are, um, because they're kept secret from me, I'm not allowed to know. Um, and so you're, you are asked to write an, a short essay on whatever prompt it is that year, and then you spend just under two hours kind of writing the essay. It's proctored online, it's an online exam, totally written, there's no speaking or listening component, all written. Um, and then that, uh, that essay is graded um, on a scale of one to 10 um, by our colleagues in the American Language Program here at Columbia. And depending on uh, 10 being the highest, one, um, one being the lowest, we never, I don't think we've ever seen a student score below a seven. Um, and depending on where your score is, um, you may be required to take an additional English language um, Kind of grammar class or an additional writing class, um, but it's but it's a pretty straightforward test and definitely not something to stress about. 
Um, if you are thinking about preparing for the exam, the best thing you can do is just do as much reading and writing in English as possible. That's really the best way to prepare. Okay, it looks like we don't have more questions. Yeah, I think we've, I think we've answered all the questions. Well, thank you everyone who did submit questions. They were excellent, excellent questions. And it's always good to, to ask questions that, that, you know, a lot of people may have the same ones. So I really um, appreciate you all taking time. And thank you so much to all of my fabulous of you colleagues. I do wish we were doing this in person. Hopefully next year uh, we will be able to resume kind of regular travel and come for, for info day in person. Um, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for that. We are all hoping for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Doing an information session from, from the corner of my living room is, is lovely, but not quite the same. Exactly. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for being part of this info session today. And also a uh, special thanks to our college coordinators, because I, I, I understand that is also our info day. And so all of you are very busy. And it's lovely to see all of you. And hopefully next year, we will be doing this in person. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Bye -bye. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Have a great Bye -bye. weekend, everyone. You Thank too. You. Bye. Bye-bye.